video 5 for the energy unit. For this one we're going to talk about power. So energy can be transferred by an external force exerted on an object or a system that moves the object or system through a distance. Now we call the energy transfer work. And energy transfer mechanical or electrical systems may occur at different rates. So power is defined as the rate of energy transfer into or out of or inside a system. So let's, uh, to help you understand this, uh, let's start with a Big Mac. Kind of a weird place to start, but we'll start with a Big Mac. So one Big Mac has 550 calories. And we kind of wonder, you know, how many joules is this? Well, first off, one food calorie equals 1,000 science calories. So really this Big Mac is 550,000 calories. Science calories anyways. Uh, one science calorie is equal to 4.184 joules. So really this Big Mac has over 2 million joules of energy. My personal mass is right around 91 kilograms. If I were to release all of this energy at once, how high could I jump into the air? Okay, well, um, we can take a look at our gravitational potential energy formula, um, mg delta y, and so we could say, well, that energy then would become uh, well, we're using conservation of energy. That energy that I release would become gravitational potential. So all that energy would become mg delta y. So if I plug that in, uh, my delta y would equal that energy divided by mg. When I do that, I get 2,500 meters, roughly 2.5 kilometers in the air, or that's right around 1.6 miles. That's amazing. Obviously, I cannot jump 1.6 miles into the air. So the reason why I can't do this is that my body will not allow me to instantaneously convert all of that Big Mac energy into kinetic energy. You know, that whole process is regulated. And that's a really good thing because if you were to suddenly dump all of your energy into something at once, you would die because you wouldn't have any energy for any other function in your body. So it has to be regulated. So the way we calculate this rate uh, is something we call power. So power, being a rate, is the derivative of the work function with respect to time. So what that means for us is that power equals change in work over change in time, or we can simply write it as power equals energy over time. That means that for power, <coughs> um, its unit will be a joule per second, which is what we call a watt. Um, in the U.S. where we use the imperial system, um, we use horsepower. And uh, a rule of thumb is one horsepower is roughly 1,000 watts. I mean, it's 746, so roughly one horsepower is right around one kilowatt. So a, a top athlete <coughs> has a, a, a power output of right around two horsepower and they really are only able to maintain that two horsepower for a, a short time. So let's calculate my new theoretical height using this power. So let's say I'm a top athlete, which is a stretch of the imagination, but let's say I'm a top athlete. So two, two horsepower would be uh, <clears throat> 1,492 watts. And I also need a, a time. Let's say I am releasing this energy in half a second. So 
Could be a little less, could be a little more, but we'll go with half a second. So that's how long it takes me to jump. So from when I'm completely uh, at my lowest point, as I'm exerting force with my legs until I leave the ground, it takes half a second. So power is energy over time. So that means that energy equals power multiplied by time. So that's going to be uh, the 1492 watts times that half a second. So that gives me 746 joules. So that's really how much energy I am releasing. Remember that delta Y then was energy over mg. So my energy, instead of 2 million, it's now 746 joules. And now it's 0.82 meters. Um, so that's 82 centimeters, uh, right around 32 inches. That's better. So, and also now it doesn't really matter if I eat a Big Mac or just one slice of pizza or something like that because um, I don't need all that energy. Now, sometimes it's useful to do calculations of power using forces and velocities. So let's work through that derivation. So power is the derivative of work with respect to time. Well, remember that work is the integral of the force vector dotted with the displacement vector. Now, one of the things you should learn in calculus is that when you take the derivative of an integral, they cancel each other out. So really, what I'm left with is power equals the force vector dotted with the displacement vector over dt. OK, well, looking at um, the dx over dt, that is the definition of velocity. So power equals the force vector dotted with the velocity vector. What that really means is that power equals force that's parallel to a velocity. Um, so a newton times a meter per second is the same thing as a watt. Electric companies sell energy to your home. And it'd be kind of nice if we knew how they measured that energy. So again, remember that power is energy over time. So that means that energy is power multiplied by time. So in other words, a joule is the same thing as a watt second. So for power companies, um, that's how they measure the energy. They, they take watts and seconds. Now, the watt second is a very, very small unit. So what power companies you use will be the kilowatt hour. And one kilowatt hour equals 3.6 megajoules or 3.6 million joules of energy. So again, notice we got this unit of power, the kilowatt, and this unit of time, the hour. Um, your home uses roughly 1,000 kilowatt hours per month. So um, you can divide that up and figure out how much energy you use per day. Okay, that concludes the uh, energy unit.